Hey guys, so in this video I want to talk to you guys about a topic that I've been asked a lot about in the comment section and that I recently came across an article on and that is the match. Stay tuned. So welcome back everyone, it's great to have you back and I would like to talk to you guys this week about this really um, intriguing article that I came across and being that match season is here and it's going to be match day any day now. Next month in March is traditionally the time that the match occurs. It's very appropriate and timely that we look into what are some of the things that go into the match process and more importantly, why is it that some people don't match? So I came across this article in the New York Times this past weekend and the article was entitled, Am I Worth It? why thousands of doctors in America can't get a job. And basically this article detailed the stories of several medical students who had completed medical school and were unfortunately unable to match afterward. So what are some of the reasons why this happens? And we're gonna get into some of the factors that play a role in whether or not someone matches on their first attempt and whether or not they're able to match to their first choice. So for those of you who don't know what a match is, let's get into the details of it. So in order for you to become a full-fledged physician, after medical school, you have to complete a residency. And that residency may be in any specialty area, OBGYN, pediatrics, surgery, and in my instance, anesthesiology. So in order for you to fully train in that specialty area, you have to complete a certain number of years in the actual hospital doing actual doctor stuff. So that's what residency is. So how do you get from medical school into a residency? Well, that's where the match comes in. The match is the process in which a medical school applicant gets that position in the residency of their choosing. And a residency, as you may have heard on TV and otherwise, is basically the time you spend in the hospital training and learning how to become that specialized physician. So for example, in anesthesiology, the residency is four years long. And what I did during my residency is every day I came in to work in the hospital and I gave anesthesia. Various scenarios, various patients, but all in all, I was learning how to do that job in its completion. And being that you're learning as a resident, that's your training period. So you're not gonna be making a full attending salary at that point. So just bear that in mind. It's like a paid internship, if you can put it that way. So how does the match all play into that? As you're going through your medical school training and you're deciding what you really wanna do, all the while you should be thinking of how you're gonna set up yourself to match into that specialty. So your application process is super important and during that process you're gonna be interviewing and those programs are gonna be looking at all of your credentials, your scores, and all of the activities that you've done during medical school. When all is said and done, you're gonna pick the top programs that you wanna to go to for residency and those programs are gonna also pick the top applicants that they would like to have as trainees. And if those picks line up, then you've matched. To get into the nitty gritty details of it, there's actually no disclosure of this whole process to the general public. It's something that's proprietary, it's an algorithm, it's, it's magical. And it just so happens that people end up, you know, lining up with their appropriate programs, and that's great. But what happens when people don't match? What's going on with that scenario? So that's the meat of this video and that's what I wanna get into with you guys today. What happens if after four years of medical school, you don't match into a residency program? Well, what, what happens in a nutshell is that you do have your degree, MD, DO, you're a physician, but you're not going to be able to obtain a license to practice, and that is the problem. So this recent article that I came across in the New York Times this past weekend really highlighted this issue in the US, and it, it went through some specific examples of people, their stories of how they've struggled to try to get matched into residency even after completing medical school, and what were some of the factors that played into the reason why they didn't match. According to the article, I am worth it. Why thousands of doctors in America can't get a job. It was stated that last year, the Association of American Medical Colleges released a study that found that the country would face a shortage of 54,100 to 139,000 physicians by 2033. However, even despite these numbers, each year thousands of graduates finish medical school 
with their degree and they are unable to obtain a medical license because they are not matching. So let's go back to the beginning. Federal funding for medical residencies began in 1965 as a part of the Social Security Act. Later in 1997, Congress passed the Balanced Budget Act, which basically capped the number and geographic distribution of Medicare funded residencies among existing training programs. Due to the 1997 Balanced Budget Act, the number of federally supported residency positions remains capped. So the pool of unmatched doctors began to grow in 2006 when the Association of American Medical Colleges called on medical schools to increase their first year enrollment by 30%. The group also called for an increase in the federally supported residency positions, but those remained capped due to that 1997 Balanced Budget Act. In 2019, the Resident Physician Shortage Reduction Act was introduced, which actually increased the number of Medicare supported residency positions available for medical students by 3,000 per year over the next period of five years. But it really has not received a vote. Congress is still working on passing a legislative package that creates a thousand new Medicare supported residency positions over the next five years. But what does that do for medical students now? Not much. So unfortunately, the process of matching really depends on you as the applicant. So what are the reasons why these applicants really did not have a successful match? Well, one thing I noticed throughout this article and looking at the different stories of the applicants was that they all seem to have one of the following three issues at play. Number one, a gap in their medical training for any reason. Number two, any failure of a licensing or important examination. Number three, international medical student graduate status. So the article states that there was a 61% match rate for international medical students, but out of that 61%, some students hadn't even received interview offers. So that then dropped the match rate to about 50%. That's something that's really important to consider when applying to medical schools. Really look into the data that the school has available on their match rate. If it's an international school, you want to look at what specialties their graduates match into and what percent of applicants end up in their first choice of residency. So super important for you as someone who's a prospective medical student to look into when considering what medical school to attend. In the article, it highlighted one specific doctor who had failed at her first attempt at a licensing exam, but then passed on her second try. She later found herself shut out out of the matching process. And over the next five years, she continued to apply with no success, accumulating a large debt for application fees, in addition to her already largely amassed medical school tuition debt. So that's something that really isn't highlighted as far as part of the process that you should consider as you're trying to figure out if medical school is for you and where you should attend. The worst possible scenario is for you to go through all of that training and take out all those loans and then at the end of the process not have a job. So I wanna kind of give you a very honest and gritty take on things that could happen so that you're more informed about the process so that you don't end up in the shoes of some people who have unfortunately gone through it and have been unsuccessful. Another really important aspect of the process is the large amount of applications a residency program will receive over the course of the application season. So unfortunately, because of this, some programs may resort to filtering applications, as was mentioned in the article, based on MD, DO, or international graduate status. In specific, the article mentioned that residency directors say that although they are committed to diversity and consider many factors be beyond test scores, they sometimes use filters and sifting through applications because they receive thousands of applicants for just a handful of spots. Because of that, and that alone, you know that as an applicant, your information that's being looked at has to be the best that it can be. So in order to overcome this seemingly daunting process, you just have to be the best applicant possible. Your scores have to be as great as they can be. And as was stated in the article, this really reduces the opportunity to diversify your program with applicants that have graduated and in medical schools that are international. This could lead to the reason why there's such a decrease in the match prospect for foreign medical graduates. But as at the current time, this is what's going on. So the cold smack of reality. Student graduating from an American college 
who chose to go to medical school abroad and the choice was for many reasons. Some have test taking anxiety, some actually prefer to go to schools that don't rely on MCAT scores as heavily and others just want to try a new environment for their experience of medical school. The warmth of the Caribbean is really attractive and they also tend to have acceptance rates that are 10 times higher than those of American medical schools. But unfortunately, they're not warned in advance of the low match rate for some international medical schools. Some say they aren't warned of the low match rates for international medical students. For Kyle, when he graduated, he got the cold smack of reality that all of his credentials didn't matter because he wasn't getting past the match algorithm Algorithm. What was most frustrating for him is being unable to work even though he's aware of the urgent need for black physicians in the United States, especially in places like Atlanta where he was raised. It really hurts, he says, because everyone thinks I should be a doctor. They saw me pass my tests, they celebrated with him but yet he's still unable to match in residency. And unfortunately, I've witnessed this reality in some people that I know personally who have gone through the whole process of medical school, tests, graduation, but at the end of it all, we're not successful in the match. It's a real thing and it affects a lot of people. So my goal in creating this video was really to point out the truth of you know, the whole process and to be really crystal clear and transparent with you guys about what could happen and to kind of give you advice on how to avoid such pitfalls for yourself and, um, you know, keep that awareness in mind when you're thinking about what schools to apply to and how you're going to be functioning as a medical student to set yourself up for a successful match in the future. So I just want to keep it all the way clear and real with you guys. When you go to medical school, it's not a light undertaking. This is a part of a large process that gets you to the goal of becoming a physician. So you really want to think about yourself and your capabilities and also just what could happen in the process and really prepare yourself mentally for all of that because at the end of it all, you're going to spend a lot of time and a lot of money, loans, of course, and invested, you know, emotional space for going through medical school and you really need to be ready for the process and the match which will happen at the end of it. So another factor is the specialty that you're looking to match into and the competitiveness of that specialty to begin with. So the more competitive the specialty, the harder it is to get a spot, even if you're like the best applicant out there. The top 10 highest competitive specialties in, in medicine, this is back in 2020, were orthopedic surgery, neurosurgery, plastic surgery, ENT or otolaryngology, dermatology, radiation oncology, urology, ophthalmology, diagnostic radiology, and general surgery. So if you're looking to match into any of those specialty areas, then you have even more pressure to get a spot. And if you have other things that might play against your application, then you may want to consider that when deciding whether or not to pursue that specialty because you want to increase your odds and make it so that your match day is a successful one and as happy and as joyful as can possibly be. You want to match into a program that you actually feel like you would be able to attend and that would make you feel that all of your work hasn't gone in vain and that you're going to be satisfied with being a physician at the end of it all. So with that, I really thank you guys for watching this video. I want you to comment away, ask questions. Let's make this a discussion. I want to give you guys as much information on this process as possible and hopefully inspire your confidence in yourself, even with all of this information, to know that you can still do it if you really, really want it. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at 3 Anesthesia and Me. And I have a new TikTok page, also named 3 Anesthesia and Me. Check it out. It has some fun stuff. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Take care.